Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do is we want to program a claw to open. We just want to do a simple program. We want to get this claw and your claw to open. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. This is just like some of the basics of programming, how this uh, robot C program works. That's the name of our program. And just some of the basics of getting this going just to get you started. We need to search for our program, Robot C. And it's this one here, so make sure you click that one. I already have it open, so I'm going to go to it right here. And then this is what the program looks like. You open it up. There will be like a window that shows up, some like information. You can X that out. There's like an X somewhere over here. You can X that out. And then here we go. So our goal is to get this claw to open. So what I did is this, this here, I typed this. I did a forward slash forward slash, and I typed go open the claw. It's very important towards the top of our program is to actually type for us so we know what our goal is for us as humans. Let's figure out what our goal is. Let's write it down um, so we can remember that. And then when you open up this program later on or any other program later on, then we can do that. So that's just a good organizational thing, organizational thing to do. So make sure you do that. And now if we look at a couple, couple other things, so our program is going to start at the top. It's going to work its way down. We have all these different lines. We also have other things here. So for example, motors. So these are like commands. And we can actually drag some of these things in. So I, I'm just going to delete that for now, but I just wanted to show you so you knew how to do that. So these things, like we can drag these different commands in. Some other stuff. We're going to be using some of these icons up here. So one thing that we need to do, one of the first things that we need to do is we need to set up our motors and sensors. We need to tell the computer where our different motors and sensors are. So I clicked motors and sensor setup. So I'll, I'll do it again. I click motors and sensor setup. And then it brings up this window. And there's these different tabs here. Underneath the digital tab, I have my touch sensor plugged in. So I have my touch sensor plugged in in my digital port. I have an import number one, which yours, is, yours should be set up there as well. We name it. I named my sensor. It's a bump sensor. So I just call it bump and I call it bump one. I just used lowercase letters, nice and simple, and then the number one, something nice and short, very descriptive. And what I could actually do later on is if I started to get a lot of bump sensors is what I'd want to do is like put a piece of tape on there and then I could call it like bump number one. And then a different one, I could put the number two on it, bump number two. And that tells me as a programmer very clearly what my different sensors are and keeps me organized. In this drop down menu, I need to choose what type of sensor it is. It's a touch sensor. We touch it. So it's a touch sensor, digital, bump one. And then the only other one that we need to go to really for the beginning here is motors. Underneath motors, we have different ports. Your motor should be plugged in port number one for your claw. So I'm just going to call my motor, my first motor. I'm just going to say, hey, this is motor one. If I had a flashlight, maybe in port two, I'd call that flashlight two and so on. So really, you know, those are really crazy names, right? Well, no, we don't want really crazy names. Like I don't want to name my motor. Bob, because if I have five motors on here, Bob, Jack, John, Jill, whatever, like, no, that's, how are you going to remember what motor is what motor? That's a pain. Just go motor, motor, one, motor two, motor three, whatever. And then we need to go from the drop down menu and choose what type of motor it is. We need to tell the computer so it knows. And if you look on the bottom of the motor, it should say, so 393 motor. I click apply. I click OK. I'm getting there. I'm getting set up. I should save this. So save as. Find an appropriate place to save it, such as on a flash drive or your H drive. So make sure you do that right away. And then let's take a look at some other stuff here. So once I did that motors and sensor setup, this information up here came up. You don't have to worry about it too much other than I see motor 1 and I see bump 1. And notice anytime I use this motor word, well, for me, I'm going to use motor one. And then if I had more motors, well, I could use those other motors. And then this word sensor here, which you'll eventually use. So we're pretty good to go there. And then I want you to notice some other stuff. So I can just kind of enter, give me some more space. Task, main, and then there's a left brace. Look at your keyboard right now. Find where that left brace is. Look, look right now. Did you find it? Did you find it? It should be right next to the letter P. 
the left brace, you hold shift, then you can get that left brace. And then if you look at the bottom, there's the right brace. It has like the pokey edge on it. Here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine that this program from here down, it's a book. Because your program is going to go in here, and it's going to start from the top and work its way down. I want you to imagine this is a book. So if this is the, this is the first part of the book, well, that would be the cover of the book, the front cover. And then, well, what, well, what would that be? That would be the back cover. So our story, our program, fits between our covers. If we don't have a cover, let's say we delete that, that's not good. If we don't have a back cover, our book is messed up, our book is not going to work, our robot is not going to want to read it. Another thing is we can have chapters in our book. I don't need to do this right now, but I just want to show you. Let's say this is a chapter in my book. I can put more braces, but anytime I put in a left brace, it better have a matching pair. It better have a right brace. Otherwise, it's going to mess up. And I want to show you something as well. I can click this Fix Formatting. I just click it, and then notice how this stuff, it like tabbed out, just like if you're doing notes or bullet points in, like let's say, Microsoft Word or Google Documents or something like that. These braces, though, I don't need for right now, so I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to bring this back. And I'm going to bring that stuff back over. Let's say I made a mistake. I can do, I can go back and I can do backspace, undo stuff, those, those types of things. Also, I can press Control-Z on the keyboard. Control-Z is in Zebra, just like other Microsoft programs. Control-C is copy. Control-P. Uh, Control V, Control V is in Victor, is paste, Control X it is uh, cut. Anyway, so let's take a look at our program. So let's start looking at line 13. Here is our motor command. This command is like telling the computer or telling our microcontroller to, hey, turn on motor 1. Motor 1 is going to have to do some stuff. So if we look at, here's our command. We typed motor, we put in a bracket, so look at your computer, find the bracket, the left bracket on your keyboard right now. And that one again, that one's next to the P, that one's you don't have to hold shift for, so left bracket. And then we have the word motor1, because that's what we name our first motor. And then we close this, this motor in here with a right bracket. Then we tell the computer, we're saying, hey, motor1, that equals 50 power. So in this line of code, this number, that means that that's the power. The power. Now, that number can go all the way up to 127. That's maximum power. It can also, zero would mean it's off. We could also do negative 127. That would be full power in, the, in an opposite direction. But it's not good to start with full power because stuff can break, so it's not good practice to start with running stuff with full power because we might break something. We don't know what it's going to do if we haven't tested it yet. So let's go at kind of like like a 50, a 50, like 50 power or something like that, which is a little bit less than half power. Now, I typed in some more human words here. That's why it's green. Again, green means that the computer is not going to read it. Stuff that's blue, red, black, those types of things, the computer's going to read that. But stuff that's green, that's just for us humans, for our language. And the way that it turns green is by doing two forward slashes. So if you notice, I got rid of my forward slashes here, so the computer's reading it. So if I put my forward slashes back in, it turns green, the computer's going to forget it. Very important to put this so I stay nice and organized. I really should be putting this green pseudocode, it's called, so like human combination of human language and computer code. I should put, be putting this pseudocode before I even put in my code. This helps me set up my organization and so on. So I did forward slash, forward slash. The claw motor is going to open with 50 power. And then I did a dot, dot, dot. I did that because I knew I had to put in another line of code. So let's pretend this is not here. I'm just going to cut that out for right now. If we did this and tried to run it, it wouldn't do anything. The reason why is because the computer does not know how long to turn this motor on. The computer knows, like, hey, we want to turn motor 1 on. 
we want 50 power, but how long am I supposed to turn this thing on for? So that's why we have to put this other command in that says wait, one capital M sec. And then we got a left parenthesis. Right now I have the number 1000 in there and then a right parenthesis. This command, this is how we do time. So we're telling this computer, we're saying, hey computer, this motor, we want this baby to turn on at 50 power and we want it to be on for one second. So the computer is going to stay at this point for one second. Once it's done with that, it'll move on to the next line of code. So wait one M sec. That M means milli. Milli means one thousandth. So one thousand milliseconds, that's what this is saying. So wait one. How many milliseconds do you want to wait? That's what this is saying. Hey, how many milliseconds do you want to wait? Well, I want to wait 1,000. So if I'm waiting 1,000 milliseconds, that means I'm waiting, the, the program is going to do this and wait here for one second. So let's say I change that to two. So now we have 2,000. How many seconds is this motor going to be on for? So that would be on for two seconds. Let's say I change this to 500. So the, this is going to be on for 500 milliseconds. How long would that motor be on for? Half a second. But I'm just going to put one second for now. And then you really want to run stuff kind of like shorter first when you first test stuff out because if it runs forever, 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 and you might, you know, it's just going to, it's kind of a pain. Then you got to stop your program, that type of stuff. So, we are ready to test this baby out and see if it works. I want my claw to open. That's my goal. So, I'm going to start with my claw closed. And then, I click Download to Robot. What might happen to you is after you click Download to Robot, it might have a, like a warning window or something like, Hey, we got a problem here. Uh, this isn't working. Something like that. You might have to up or download the newer version of a firmware for the program. So you could click download firmware here. Or you might have to update your Cortex. This thing here, you might have to update that. So how you do that is you go to robot, you click download firmware, automatically update the VEX Cortex. And then that will update it. And then the computer and the Cortex or microcontroller, whatever you want to call it, should be able to com communicate with each other. And then let's try it again. So I'm ready to test this thing. The window here showed up. I'm ready to click start and try it out. I have my microcontrollers on, the lights are flashing. My USB cord is connected to the microcontroller and the computer. My claw is closed, nothing's in the way of it. What, what I would do is I would set this on my table because that's the safe thing to do. But so you guys can see it, I'm gonna hold it right here. I'm gonna try out my program, I'm gonna click start. Let's see what happens. <gasps> it, it didn't work. What's going on? So let's try it again. Hmm. I hear a noise. I'm going to try it one more time. I hear a noise. It looked like it tried to spin. Huh. I have a problem. Please help me. What's my problem? What's going on here? Why is the claw not working? What should I do to fix this? So I thought about it. Well, there's nothing in the way. I am using enough power. I just know from experience that 50 is enough power to open this. That must mean one thing must be changed. Let's say I try the opposite direction. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to download. So I did a negative value on that 50 power, and let's try it out. Let's see if it works. I click start. Oh, yeah. Give me a high five. I got it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is your turn. Get your claw to open. Go through this step by step. Get that baby to open, and once you got it, you got to give somebody a high five. And once you see somebody get it, you got to congratulate them and say, hey, Nice job, you got it. Give them a high five.